Hey guys, Sahar here. I'm here with my beautiful friend Marissa. I'm going to be doing her makeup today for an event that she has tonight. So the colors that we're going for are like burgundy, bronze. She's gonna be wearing some gold jewelry, so I'm gonna try to accentuate that with the look. To start off the look, I'm just starting by cleansing Marissa's skin. Marissa, please tell us a little bit more about your skin type. So I was blessed with a pretty easy to maintain <laughs> skin type. Um, after my like pimple phase in high school, mm -hmm. it, it was actually pretty easy to maintain. The only things I really do are cleanse once a day and then put some moisturizer, maybe a little bit of eye cream, and then that's wow. about it. Yeah, and making sure that I remove all my makeup at the end of the day. Like I cannot relate. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say your skin type is more dry or oily? Because I feel like it sounds like it's normal and it's just perfect. Okay, it's not perfect. <laughs> I would say it's normal. So it is. <laughs> normal leaning to dry. Okay. So I'm starting with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Serum oh. Crystal Elixir. I feel like it's a really nice pre-makeup product. So how do you know what you're supposed to put the base of your makeup before you actually apply anything like before primer um it will depend on your skin type so for everyone you should always start with a moisturizer mm -hmm. because all skin types can use you know moisturizing um but if you have like an oilier skin type you should also use like a mattifying primer so for me my skin is extremely dry i will just use moisturizer and like call it a day okay so now i'm just using dip brow gel by anastasia beverly hills in caramel just to fill in the arch of her brow a little bit more. I'm using a shade that's a decent bit lighter than her actual hair color because she already has quite thick brows and I don't want it to look like boxy. So Marissa, are you gonna be on TV tonight? I think I am. <laughs> it's an online event that they're streaming on all these different channels. So somebody's gonna be watching. Okay. Maybe my parents. Oh, I'll watch. I'll watch. Send me the link. Shape locked in. Now I'm using the clear brow gel just to poof the hairs up a bit more. So I just applied a little bit of concealer over her lids. I'm going to blend it out to pick up any excess product. But what this does is just gives like a nice blank canvas for me to put eyeshadow on top of. We are going to move into eyeshadow. I'm just going to use this kind of like medium brown eyeshadow as a starting point and I'm going to start by placing it on the outer corner of her eye but making sure not to take it above the crease and yeah that's the beginning of the shape that's how I like to start next I'm going into this reddish shade from the Pat McGrath palette just to kind of blend that brown out this is the kind of burgundy twist to the look I'm going to take the same color on a bigger, fluffier brush and blend outwards with less pressure. So the same burgundy shade looks more diffused. And I'm going to bring that into the eye as well. So Marissa, you told me you studied psychology in university. How was that? I did. I, I honestly loved it. Did you look up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things where... I knew I wasn't really looking to be a psychologist, but the subject fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, these are skills that I can apply to daily life. Yes. And I did. Like, I, I, I feel like I use it every day. So it's cool. Like, Actually, I feel the same way about my degree. I mean, I did accounting and finance. <laughs> oh my God, that's so useful. That's so much more useful. I, it's been very useful with like my business and like running stuff. It helps a lot. The accounting part, I hated the finance part of my degree. Oh my God, I did like so bad in every finance economics module, but accounting, I, ca I could get behind. Are you quite like, are you quite good with numbers? I am, I, I'm, I was good at math in school, could you look up? But I wasn't good enough to do pure math. So I actually did HL math. Oh no, see, <laughs> I was a math studies gal. Oh my God. Because <laughs> I thought math is never gonna be my priority. I wasn't terrible. Yeah. I just sorry. knew that I wanted the exam points more than I wanted the math knowledge, so. Yeah, I, I was the opposite. I was like, I just, I just want to be good at math, you know? I wanted so badly to be good at math. It's actually like really sad because all of IB, I was miserable because of HL math. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like my friends were vibing, you know, they were living their life, but I did <laughs> HL math, I did HL art, 
and HL biology, and I was just always miserable. I, but I love that combination of subjects, though. Thanks. I think it was like pretty well-rounded, yeah. but it drove me crazy. Um, I was a humanities gal. Nice. I did um, higher, no, I did higher biology, higher literature, and psychology. Wow. I did psychology in IB. It was mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, it was so good. My teacher was actually one of the reasons why I got into the degree. Wow. She was so inspiring. And she was like, you know, these are tools for life. They're not just for what kind of job you want. They're yeah. help you every on every level. And it has done. Cool. So because my school was a piece of shit, um, I, had, <laughs> I had the same teacher for biology and psychology. Right. But he was wonderful, so we didn't mind. Okay. But I did see him way too much. <laughs> like... Uh. You know, there were times when we had like double period biology and then psychology later in the day and we have like six subjects in a day. So yeah. three of those are with him. We're like, sup, like we're just in this room all day, basically. My math teacher was the higher level math teacher. So you could tell he kind of he didn't look down on us, but he was kind of like, oh, look at these idiots. Oh, no. <laughs> And he was the scariest teacher, like he had the reputation for being the strictest, the harshest, the angriest. I can imagine, yeah. But he just treated us like we were special children. <laughs> so I've used all the matte shades, but this like slightly shimmery shade is really calling me. I feel like just a bit in the center of the eye will really make the eye pop and look super three-dimensional. So I've applied the NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation on Marissa. And I'm just using a foundation brush to drag it out. I think it matches her super well. So I apply the foundation to the center of the face and then I start blending it out, look here. She has like really, really perfect skin. So <laughs> there's not much use for me here, but I'm glad I could help. It feels like a crime to cover up freckles. I feel like this is what every makeup artist has been like, you gotta stay out of the sun. <laughs> no, I feel like they're very, very cute. I once tried to buy um, primer yeah. in yep. Seoul Incheon Airport. Yeah. And they took the primer and went primer away and went, no, no, what you need is sunblock. And they refused to sell oh me my what God. I wanted to buy. Oh my God. What the hell? <laughs> what <laughs> the <laughs> hell? You're too dark. So she tried to sell me sunblock. <laughs> so Marissa, you're mm -hmm. telling me you quit your job this year. I did. It was a, I think it was a COVID related um, decision. Yeah. Because I basically started the year. I'm a I freelance, like I'm a contractor. So okay. I'm used to having three or four things on the go. Mm -hmm. And then COVID being COVID, a lot of stuff started to fall through. And then I was basically working really, really hard for like 20% of my salary. And I just thought to myself, why don't I just take the break? Like mm -hmm. why why work so hard for you know to look here yeah not something that wasn't really giving me time and space to breathe yeah and so i thought you know you pull the here? cord pull the cord yeah and um still working part-time you know picking up things to pay the bills but it's been the most liberating thing to just take it easy for a while nice yeah and then i got to pick up gigs like this one, we're like hosting a show. So. Fancy! <laughs> so you worked in the travel sector before? Yeah, so I worked in travel and events, which were wow. two industries that have not done the best with COVID. Probably not for a while. No, not for a while. And so it was really challenging. And the problem was that I loved the company I was working with. So yeah. it was quite heartbreaking to walk away from. Yeah, but, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, but onto other brighter things. Started my podcast. Yeah, I yeah. saw. You know, focused on other passion projects and that's been amazing. Nice. So me and Marissa, I think, met maybe like one month ago. <laughs> yeah, we did. We met so recently. Yeah. But I feel like I was always aware of you because of all of our mutual friends. I think I was aware of you <laughs> because of your and Hunley's podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always think people are aware of me because I'm like a professional plus one. I turn up <laughs> at all the events. Oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> no, I am. But I mean, I, I kind of like that role. 
because it means you get to like meet all these different people like you. Mm -hmm. Joke up, sorry. Yeah. Even though I'm not really in the same industry as you guys. Well, you know, you were in travel and events. You're like on the side of planning events. I'm mm. on the side of showing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. True. It is True. close. I was just behind the scenes. Yeah. I've got the Fenty Beauty matchstick and truffle. I'm just putting it out on my arm. So this is her cheekbone. I'm gonna go higher. Because the whole point of the contour is to make the cheekbones look lifted. So you don't want to apply it like on or below your actual cheekbone. You want to apply it higher. I'm applying with this wonderful base brush from Bloom, which is a Singaporean brand actually. And I love the shape of it. It's so perfect to apply it. And it kind of blends as I apply it. So it makes my job a lot easier. Next, I'm using the Givenchy Loose Powder. It's a Prism Libre Powder. How do you feel about big splooches of blush? <laughs> I think it reminds me of when you start to put makeup on your dolls at first, <laughs> and you don't know what blending is. Oh no. Well, I'll blend it out for you. But <laughs> Thank you so much. So kind. I felt like the splooches look cute on you. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminds me of those porcelain dolls, you know? Yeah. Where they have like the perfect little circle. Yeah, yeah. Terrifying dolls, because you think they're going to come alive at night, but also kind of cute. I did not think that till like movies fed me that. Exactly. Propaganda. That's what it is. Anti-doll propaganda. <laughs> okay, we're finishing off with this gorgeous nude lip just to balance the eyes out. How do you feel, Marissa? I feel good. Ah. I keep trying to like look at the camera for you, but then I keep <laughs> looking at myself being like, who is she? <laughs> Very glam. I love it. All right, well, here is the finished look on Marissa. I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more of these transformation videos on my YouTube. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can know when I post. I'll go ahead and leave Marissa's links in the description of the video.